So I saw a review on the Samsung QN98 from another AV YouTuber, and I wanted to address some of the things that were said about the blooming. One being that you can sit directly in front of the TV and you barely see it at all. Here you see me on the power menu where you see it's checking for the device, no signal and all that good stuff. You will notice blooming on this menu. If you sit directly in front of your TV, it will be very easy to notice. If you pull up the home menu, you will notice massive blooming around that entire bar at the bottom. You'll notice all the logos themselves, each little individual tile has blooming around it to this almost to this exact degree. It is a very noticeable thing that you can see regardless of your positioning. One of the things I want to point your attention to is here I am on my YouTube channel and I'm about to run the picture quality test. Now you'll notice even though I have a bar up at the same exact ISO I was just at a second ago, there is no blooming on the screen. So I'm not saying that you will never have a blooming free experience, but the level of blooming you will notice from time to time, if you really must call it that, is still really noticeable. So while there is no bloom on this bar right now and it's inky black because it's dimming down, I'm going to hit play and then we're going to start the video. Now as I look at this globe, I don't really notice that much bloom. There's some hazing to it, but it's not the most terrible thing I've ever seen. And I've made it a point to over exaggerate my ISO to kind of show that stuff off. Now here it's just over blooming, so I'm just going to lower it down a bit. Now I want to point your attention to something. I'm going to pause right about here. Notice how this particular star field does not have any kind of local dimming crushing or anything like that. Some star fields, for whatever reason, appear to be immune to the local dimming crushing. And I wanted to show this in the paused state first because I'm going to show you what happens when we hit play. As we hit play, you guys see the star field moving and you can clearly see it. Now we have significant dimming, and this is as stars start to come in. I've gone ahead and turned on my Sony Bravia A8G OLED to show you the level of crushing that is happening on the Samsung QN85A to the left. My Sony Bravia OLED is showing every single star. Now we're going to go back to that initial star field. Now I want you to pay close attention to the text and look at the faint blooming around the text versus OLED. That's about the difference you can see. Also, you can still see blooming within the stars, but you do still see about as much stars on that particular star field. But notice how in this one, the dimming and crushing is astronomical. Pun intended, of course. I'm just saying, no matter how you look at it, the local dimming does do some funky stuff from time to time, and it is an issue. Samsung does have to fix it. Being an AV enthusiast is fine. Having reviews... Being excited is fine, but trying to glow up about this TV because you want to get views and you want to make sure you have the return on your investment for buying this TV specifically just to review it is not okay. This television is not worth the glowing. This television is not worth the hype. This television is not perfect. In the coming weeks, you're going to see people glow about this TV. You're going to see people tell you that this is a blooming free TV, the most perfect TV. There's no issue with this TV. And while some images like this absolutely do better than others, others like this one won't do so great. This TV struggles when you have tiny windows of peak brightness clustered together in different areas. This TV struggles when you have just complex geometry, really. And I think that more transparency around what trips up the local dimming algorithm will help them either create a firmware patch that will fix it, warn enough people that this exists to voice their opinion about it and to speak about it not being okay and to maybe get something done about it but this blind just awarding them like all this credit is unnecessary it does do good on some examples but not all like as i see it here with my naked eye this particular demo is not looking as uniform as it was now my iso isn't high enough to show that stuff off I will probably have to raise it a little bit. Maybe you guys can see it there. And now you can see the blooming that's happening around the cross there, 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 and a little bit up there. Again, it's nothing that's going to absolutely destroy the television because it is pretty faint, I suppose. But you have to understand, Samsung marketed this television as a quantum matrix technology display, something that was going to be basically blooming free 
and it was a magnificent experience. The world's first quantum matrix television. That's their, their marketing pun and ploy. And that ploy is going to manipulate millions of hardworking consumers out of their money if you allow them to get away with this level of false advertisement. I don't care how you slice it. When you look at an actual OLED display like the Sony Bravia a g to the right or the LG C10 and you look at what Samsung is doing this year, the blooming is present. Now I can lower down my ISO a little bit and you know, I can even take it down as low as I want. I could do one of this. I'm gonna go all the way down, all the way down. Now look at it. Oh my God, it's exactly like OLED. It's super inky, super deep black. These blacks are amazing. You're gonna see people play those tricks. Using your ISO or the sensitivity to light, you can augment these results very easily on YouTube. Do not be fooled by people who will play this trick on you and try to say, up oh, there's no blooming, up oh, it's faint blooming, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, you see, look how amazing it is, because here I am with the same Samsung QN85A. I've got my ISO turned really down low, and you could almost think it's side by side next to an OLED perfectly uniform. But once you start raising that ISO, and showing off or actually attempting to show off the light uniformity issues that are happening around those squares, it becomes very apparent, very apparent. And I can see this. I physically with my naked eye can see this blooming here. I can see it over here, around here. I can see it under here. I can see it under here. Now the light that's kind of extending out that way, that's glare from the glass on my lens. But I'm telling you, I can see all of these little faint trails of blooming. But sure as fire, people will lower down their ISO like this, sit in these cave room environments or these darker room environments. They'll lower it to levels like this to where it seems even more believable. And they'll say, see, look, my room is well lit. You can clearly see everything on the table. You see everything. It, it's, it's not a problem. There's no issue. But the reality is there are people playing ISO tricks. There, there will be a lot more people that are going to glow about this with these ISO tricks. Do not be fooled. Off-axis viewing is horrible if you're somebody that has a wide seating arrangement. The black levels will fall apart like nobody's business. It is probably the worst I've ever seen on any series of televisions because of the way they made those mini LEDs. I don't know what they did, but off-axis viewing is, is already gone. You've lost that completely. And that's a shame considering Samsung used to offer some sort of wide-angle benefit. And that seems to have been rolled back entirely because the black levels are basically trash. And I'm just saying, no matter what you see on YouTube, you have to obviously see it yourself, but you'll see the blooming if you're looking for it. Now, I'm not saying colors aren't beautiful. They can be beautiful on the Samsung QN85A, definitely more so than the QN90A, and I'll show that off. I mean, but to try to say that it's not as bad as it is is really irritating. Now, also, don't misinterpret this. There are also those that will try to make a mountain out of a molehill. And I say molehill in the means that the black levels can be inky from time to time. So if you set it to standard and you have a, you know, relatively low peak brightness on your TV, like I've lowered the brightness here, you can get deeper black levels. But you throw away the blistering peak brightness that you're paying for, almost making it like a non-benefit. So there are things you can do to get better brightness and, and better blooming control. But all of it kind of revolves around you lowering the brightness of the TV. Now, typically in Samsung TVs, you could go low on local dimming, and that would almost immediately fix any kind of blooming you had. Well, watch what happens this year. Everything gets gray. So it acts almost as if it just essentially turns off local dimming, and there is no local dimming whatsoever. The, the black is so gray on my end right now that it really almost looks like an IPS display. You're not going to see that on YouTube, but it's really bad. Then you can go to standard, which is what I recommend. I recommend everyone just leave it in standard and seriously, just don't even touch it. Because when you go to high, there are two things that happen when you set your local dimming to high. The first thing that happens is your gamma starts getting funky. Colors start randomly getting darker. Things start looking like they're in ST2084, which in English just means that you're getting a darker discolored image that looks like somebody created a little bit more of a negative into your picture. Gamma just really is messed up there. And then the other thing that happens is you get more blooming. Things start becoming more actuated or, or, or accented with, with the blooming, and, and you can see it on a lot of different patterns. And not only patterns, but in like real-world examples. I'm sure if I were to just pull up the regular menu, right, 
you can probably see that it's it's way in far blooming a bit more than it should be blooming. So that's one of the things that you're not going to like. Now, again, you're not going to see everything that I'm trying to show off here on camera now that I've lowered down the peak brightness. But essentially, if you want the best kind of blooming free, I guess, you're going to have to lower your brightness and you're going to have to rock it in standard because that's the only way you're getting away with that. Because otherwise, if you're using it like most people who have been using Samsung TVs, where you try to put your brightness a bit higher to see those ridiculous peak brightness levels, which, by the way, I will be measuring and tell you exactly what that figure is. But, you know, if you're trying to see that, you're, you're not going to be able to use all of it because it's destructive brightness for the local dimming algorithm that Samsung has programmed at this point so far where we sit in March of 2021. I'm telling you right now, it's just not ready yet. And as you see it next to an OLED, the OLED doesn't trip up like that. So I wanted to make it abundantly clear that even though Samsung is talking about the world's first quantum matrix TV at this point, March 2021, it doesn't mean anything. So I understand that people are going to be excited. You're going to see reviews glow about it. You're going to see a lot of consumers coming from worse TVs that are going to glow about it. You're going to see blooming and you're going to be disappointed if you believe any of these people. And I'm just putting this out there to really set the record straight and to maybe tell some of those individuals out there that might be glowing a little harder than they should to maybe tighten up a little bit.